We're Jake and Emily, the two roaming souls, and this is everything you need to know to plan a backcountry ski hut trip in Colorado. In this video, you can follow along on our recent trip to Vance's cabin near Leadville, Colorado. Woo! Before you ever consider strapping on your ski boots, you need to do some careful planning and book a reservation. Huts book up quickly, especially on desired weekends, and the most easily accessible huts are commonly booked first. These backcountry huts in Colorado are managed by a nonprofit called the 10th Mountain Division Hut Association. You can research, plan, and reserve huts at their awesome web address, huts.org. Huts can be booked in both winter and summer, though this video specifically covers the details of a winter trip. Choosing which hut to book depends on many factors, like location, size, and amenities. But probably the most important is the backcountry ability and physical fitness of your group, as even the easiest to access huts can still be quite a physical challenge. All right, we made it to the trailhead. Everyone's been gearing up, which takes like 45 minutes, you know, just a million items on the list but getting excited ready to hit the trail weather could not be nicer before the day of your trip study the common routes and trailheads your trip leader should have either a paper or digital topographic map of the region while weather won't be a factor for us today winter travelers should be ready to navigate in whiteout conditions Good thing to do is a beacon check. You have someone switch to search mode and just make sure everyone who passes you is beeping. Come on down. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm taking a test. You are. And you passed. Yes. Congratulations. Access training. You are found. <laughs> we caught one. We caught one. Trying to get through without our beacon on. Excellent. The three essential pieces of an avalanche safety kit are an avalanche beacon, a shovel, and a probe. They are the tried and tested tools for locating and rescuing people buried in avalanche debris. And while we do briefly cover these things, this video is not a sufficient training on how to use them. The real hero of the trip, the guy pulling the beer sled. This time of year, it's really warm out and so it's almost a good idea to put wax on your skin so yeah. that the snow doesn't stick to them you don't end yeah. up like quickly over so here it's not a conspiracy but big wax <laughs> so wax it's the real thing <laughs> visiting these huts in the winter requires special knowledge in backcountry winter travel avalanche safety and route finding making progress at high elevation with heavy packs and the variables of winter weather will challenge even the most fit and experienced visitors but despite these somewhat high barriers to entry, if you are not confident in your ability, you can hire a guide through a variety of licensed guide companies. All right, we're closing in on the home stretch. Just a little bit of downhill down to the hut. It's so cool up here. Depending on the terrain and the distance, it can be beneficial to use a sled for transporting gear. Pulling the sled uphill is generally pretty straightforward, but it's important to also have a tail rope for guiding downhill and across slopes. Definitely want to make sure that all the gear is secured to the sled for inevitable mishaps. Oh, ah!
The sled survives. Just barely, dude. We really limped into the finish line. Oh. Woo! This is our bunk up here. The beds are a little close together, but we're all. But well, we're all friends here, so it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Hoping it doesn't get too hot up here in the loft because of the, the wood stove, but it should be fun. Everybody's settling in. It's our trip, Nate, our trip leader, Nathan. Thank you for bringing us here. I'm gonna start the charcuterie board. Ooh, baby. My name's Sam. He's our kitchen boy. <laughs> <laughs> Here. I'm just kitchen bitch. <laughs> no, just kidding. Sam's a hero. He and Nathan, Our they pulled the sled ball. pretty much the whole way. The first thing to do when you get to your hut is get the fire and water going. All huts have some combination of wood stoves and fireplaces. They keep the hut toasty warm and also provide a good place to melt snow for drinking. Oh yeah. Good pull right there. After snow is melted, you can either filter it or boil it on the propane stove so that it's safe to drink. With a big group, it's nearly a constant chore that has to be managed. Every hut has an outhouse designated for doing your business. And it's a cardinal rule that you don't pee around the hut since that's the water that you'll be collecting for drinking. Once you have booked a hut, familiarize yourself with the amenities provided. This will shape the way you plan and pack for the trip. Most huts don't have refrigeration, running water, or electricity. So often you need to bring your own battery bank to charge devices, keep perishable food in the coolers provided, and plan your meals based on the cooking options. There's always a propane stovetop, but sometimes also an oven and a gas grill. That evening, we had a big pasta dinner, played games, and watched a colorful sunset. The equipment needed for backcountry travel are skis with touring bindings and climbing skins, or the snowboarding equivalent called a split board. Climbing skins are like a directional carpet which provides grip for going uphill. If you don't have backcountry ski gear, snowshoes are also an acceptable means to reach some of the easier huts. But snowshoeing can be just as exhausting and still doesn't excuse you from needing backcountry knowledge or avalanche gear. All right, we got all the crew ready. We're going on a tour today. Something nice and mellow. We chose this time of year to take this trip, not because we thought the skiing would be really good, but it's like 50 degrees out. It's really nice. So just going for a nice mellow tour, gonna hang out in the sun. to the top of Taylor Hill which is right back there and had a long talk about if we want to go farther in front of us is Chicago Ridge um, and yeah everyone in the group is up for it so we're gonna head over there drop in a little saddle climb up and then ski back to the hut We made it to the bottom of Chicago Ridge. Spirits are high. We'll see how high we get up. Made it to the top. Gonna enjoy a nice beer.
Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Pretty fun, right? Yeah, that was really fun. It, it was, was like, great. It was kind of flat, but if you just kept your speed up, it was yeah. so easy. It was like so fun. It worked well. There you go, Mal. Hell yeah. Yee! Woo! Wow. 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 Woo! Woo! of afternoon to enjoy the deck in the sun. Yeah. It's the charcuterie hour again. for one last night of fun and games, winding down with another mesmerizing sunset. So there's not really a cleaning crew that comes at all. You are the cleaning crew. So you gotta go through and like do all the dishes, clean all the surfaces, sweep out, um, restock the firewood, and then also make sure that there's water um, so you get some snow, put it in pots so that it's already like melted when the next people arrive. It's just really nice after you have been touring to get here, you show up and there's already some water to start boiling to drink. But we're looking pretty clean, good in here, and ready to head out. If we had to give a final review of Vance's cabin, here are the things that we liked and didn't like. The biggest negative was the awkward choke point in the living room. Many huts have the wood stove right in the middle of the living room, and it makes for a much better gathering space for big groups. But what we loved about Vance's cabin is the easy access, amazingly spacious south-facing deck, and great skiing right from the backyard. Thanks for coming along on another Two Roaming Souls adventure. If you are looking for an easier hut trip for your first time, these ones are all less than three miles one way. And check out the article on our website with all the information plus more. It's got everything from our packing list to helpful tips. Subscribe to our channel and we'll catch you on the next adventure.